For the family getting news for the dad's twin. Mary Lee, today is Freaky Friday in my city, Chicago, December the 16th, 2022. Sweet 16. Oh, let's take them back a little bit, family. You know, my sweet 16th birthday suck. I was in the Department of Correction in Naperville, I believe, Illinois. Yeah, it sucked. You know, I try saving, you know, this white girl and her baby from getting beat up. Her name was Kim, and somebody wanted me to beat her up and stuff. You know, try to get me in trouble. You know, think I'm a, uh, a tyrant or something. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I do a lot of things, but I ain't stupid. You understand? So I was about 15 at the time, going on 16. And, you know, somebody had to get some trumped up charges on me and blame me. But for the most part, I had a wicked-ass motherfucker roommate by the name of Charlotte and shit. Charlotte Hawkins. She was a thief. She's probably still a thief. And all skin folk and kin folk. And we were roommates. And, you know, that's when, you know, my foster mother, Betty Jean Redman, you know, she would send me uh, gifts and stuff, you know, and I was keeping in touch with her and stuff. And, you know, for my sweet 16th birthday, they, you know, she supposed to have sent me a gift and I ain't get it. They stole my gifts and shit. Real fucking tough. Department of Correction, and they stole the music that I, I was, you know, downloading off the radio. You understand what I'm saying? Back in the day, you could take cassette tapes and, you know, put the music off the radio on the cassette tapes, and there was no interruptions. I had made that shit so goddamn perfect. They started talking, <laughs> doing a um, song and stuff. That's how good I was and stuff. And they always wanted to know what kind of music I was listening to because they knew that was sale because, you know, I'm an originator of rap music since the age of eight, 1975, and I got an ear for good motherfucking music and an eye for good shit. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, that's just my gift. And when people steal my gifts after I help, you know, another race, you know, save their race, you know, and they try to come at me because, you know, I'm a good person and they don't care about their own people and, you know, so-called uh, police and stuff, which ain't the police, some goddamn white lady, big as fuck at the time I was 15, you know, they're going to throw me in detention for some bullshit. I still don't understand how I ended up in detention and shit, other than the fact niggas was hating and just, you know, was fucking with me and shit. And, you know, I realized they was fucking with me and shit, me being rambunctious as a teenager and stuff. This big ass fucking goddamn white lady going to try to intimidate me. And God told me to hit her in the face and shit. She was supposed to be the goddamn, you know, correctional officer or whatever and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And she was fucking with me and shit. And I was tired of getting fucked with after I saved one of their goddamn people from getting beat the fuck up and possibly losing their goddamn child. You understand what I'm saying? I felt like I supposed to have been a hero or a shero. You understand what I'm saying? And they was picking on me. So God told me to hit the bitch in the face and I broke her fucking nose and shit. Real fucking tough. Because they kept fucking with me and shit. She deserved it. She was nosy and shit. Real fucking talk. And if she alive today, she'll tell you, if she want to save her life and her family, that she was wrong. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't want to hit her. The spirit made me hit her because I, I believe she was trying to attack me for no reason at all. And I just got the first lick in and shit. Real fucking talk. That's the honest guy's truth. And I've been catching hell ever since and stuff. But not only that. I've been catching hell more so than anything because I stood up for myself at the age of six in 1973 because I was a child abuse victim and I'm still going through hell. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. They thought I'd be dead by now, but I'm not. Now, let us speed it up. You understand what I'm saying? Now, in AA, they put me in AA because in 1995, I put my uh, voice to three cassette tapes running back to the sound of music and the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech and I gave it to, you know, some higher ups like Oprah Winfrey and through a set in the garbage can so somebody could get out and just in case Oprah backstabbed me like she did. And, you know, long story short, shit went crazy, right? You understand what I'm saying? Nobody would kept a real but me. You understand what I'm saying? They threw me on a cycle would try to make it seem as though I was crazy and stuff to try to, you know, discredit me. You understand what I'm saying? Um, most Def got a song called uh, Mr. Nigga, you understand what I'm saying, real talk, Tupac got a song called Peep Game, you know, and because 
they wanted to know if I was really that person on them cassette tapes. They tried to make it seem as though they didn't know who I was when they put me in AA in 1996. And I played it off as long as I could and stuff, but I knew I was running out of time because I got older. You understand what I'm saying? So I threw my book to them, Ryan's Poems and Metaphors Plus One Song with a bunch of proof and my DCFS files and things of that nature and stuff. And, you know, got my GED, Woo Wat the Bam, was a pillar in my community. Matter of fact, I upgraded the computer the community in Rogers Park. Now it looked like shit since I, you know, got railroaded in 2008 and that's exactly what they deserve. You know, shit in their face, real fucking talk for shit on me, you know, saying I disarmed a police officer for something. I did not do, you know what I'm saying, May 31st, 2008, trying to discredit me once they read my book. I guess they weren't satisfied. It was free, nigga. You should have been. Give it back. Long story short. So, you know, they threw me in prison. They, I got out of prison and stuff. Went back to prison. You understand what I'm saying? Went to AA trying to forget about the bullshit they sent me through. Lost everything. So-called family, friends, and Mary McAmyra's and shit. And the motherfuckers got down. Still wasn't happy and shit. So Mother's Day, speed it up, uh, May 8th of 2016, they decided they wanted to get their crew another crew going on and stuff because all they're doing is starting the game over right you understand what i'm saying it's worse now than it ever is because you know once niggas got their hands in a lot of shit that ladies put together and stuff it's only gonna go worse and stuff for real because they just want the money and a little popularity and a little fame and try to defame you at the same time so basically i found out it was the police you understand what i'm saying that railroaded me may 8th 2016 this guy by the name of ricky in aa He's dark-skinned like me. He grabbed some young guy by the name of Paris who was thirsty and homeless and stuff and would have sold his mama out probably for the spot. You understand what I'm saying? They'd have made him the president of the Mustard Seed AA meeting. You understand what I'm saying? He probably ain't even sober. Who knows? I don't know if he is. That's good. If not, he need to step down. You know, they gave him a little position and Ricky and Paris, you know, in cahoots, and I knew it had to be a guy that had me sleeping on the floor for Mother's Day, May 8th of 2016. I knew it had to be a guy, so I did a little investigating myself, and sure enough, you understand what I'm saying? It was the so-called sheriff. He's a, supposed to be a sheriff, Ricky. Yeah, and now, you know, I got to go to my AA meeting at Rogers Park Alanoff Club, my home group, and tomorrow, Paris is supposed to be given you know, a lead. See, these are the ones that was waiting in the wing for real niggas to get older and step down so or whatever the case, get railroaded so they could take our place and stuff. But they made it shittier. They didn't make it better. Now, across the street from the AA meeting that is my home group on Greenleaf and Clark, they got a vaping store right across the street. So, you know, whenever y'all want to relapse, you just go over there. And get your little drug paraphernalia and smoke your little weed or smoke your crack, drink your little beer and act like you sober, I guess. You understand what I'm saying? They gave me a cancer, you know, in 2016, the day after Mother's Day. They held me down May 9th of 2016 on the psych ward at the Cook County Jail and gave me cancer. Fuck boys and shit. And these same fuck boys is the same mentality in this trap building that I'm at, 6210 South Kimbark Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Anytime you want to knock on this door, you fake-ass police officer and blow my head off, I guarantee you some white motherfuckers that's going to finish the job for me. I don't worry about you niggas. Stop using me for a respirator. And y'all shit suck. You did all that to me for what? Just to show me that you worse off without me than you was with me, and I'm still sober. Okay, real fucking talk. My sobriety is Christmas, December 25th, 1997. That ain't going to change. But I hope this be your face on the badge next time. For real. Ricky, I never did like you and shit. I ain't going to say I didn't like you. I just never trusted you. You understand? Y'all think the police ain't in these AA meetings and all around you and shit? So-called police. Because they don't solve nothing. You understand? I solve more goddamn shit than they did. All they do is trail me. Get the answer and take the fucking credit. You understand what I'm saying? And them same police on the on the beat getting major pay. We was all supposed to be billionaires, but they was hating on me so much. They was like, oh, we got to get rid of her and then we could be up next and shit. How's that working out for you? How much money do you need to die? 
Give them as much as they need. Bury them with them and burn them if you got to. You know what I do? I break the balls. Flip the Bible. This is for Paris and his so-called sponsor, Ricky. Real fucking tough. With his ugly ass. And he's gay. Now, I don't care about that. But don't hate on me, nigga. For real. I should make a citizen arrest for attempt to murder you, bitch. This the color purple. This the 10. I'ma always win, stupid motherfucker. 14 is my lucky number. Y'all trying to do me like Emmett Till? Money, Mississippi? I am the color purple, bitch. And 10 is my favorite number. You understand what I'm saying? You, you wouldn't be shit without me. Oprah wouldn't be shit without me. None of you motherfuckers. Stop hating. This says game over right here. This is 2 Kings chapter 24 and 25. Right here I wrote City Hall. Right here I wrote 1973. Right here I wrote 1975. Right here I wrote May 31st. Right here I wrote May 25th. I wrote 41 because I was 41 years old when they railroaded me and shit. Right here, this say mustard seed, stupid bitch. Can you see, you stupid motherfucker? Can you see, bitch? Now, if you come to my goddamn home group with that bullshit Saturday, I will go and make a goddamn citizen arrest, bitch. And I will use the Bible to fucking finish the job. This says Mary X, Malcolm X, um, 2 Kings, Chapter 25, verse 19, it, it says, And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war, and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city. And the principal scribe, mean writer, of the host, which mustered the people of the land, and three score men, which is sixty, of the people of the land that were found in this city. And I put stolen. Found means stolen, nigga. How you gonna find something that ain't yours, nigga? Stinking ass bastards. I never fucking lose. Real fucking talk. This say game over right here. Now, if you can top that, you faggot ass motherfucker. I dare you, bitch. Come to my fucking AA meeting with that bullshit if you want to. I'll walk right down to the goddamn police station and have you bitches arrested for attempted murder, bitch. Now you try me if you want to. You better be kissing my ass, motherfucker. That's what you better be doing. Family, step your game up. It's your ghetto news reporter, man. Dash Twin and Mary Lee. I need my real niggas to ride with me t tomorrow, for real. For real. If you care about your family and you, you know I ain't lying. I never lose, bitch. Peace.